Hello Twin Flames, welcome to my channel, whether you're new or you're coming back. Today we're doing a Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine energy check-in and because we're having full moon in Virgo peaking today, this is what we're going to focus on and I have brought my Beyond Lemuria deck. We're going to start with it, we'll get some guiding messages and then we'll look at what the moon is bringing in actually. What are we leaving behind with this full moon and what kind of opportunities? are being brought in and then as always we'll get messages between the twins all right let's get a card for divine feminines watching first of all hope you guys are doing great hope you have a great weekend a lot of us are waiting for the spring here in the northern hemisphere especially in colder weather Okay, so we've got Earth, Nurture Nature, wow. This is actually, ironically, very much in tune with, uh, with uh, Virgo because it's an Earth sign and it's a healer sign, like a very practical aspect of a healer, you know, like uh, whatever like medicinal methods and uh, practices people use, um, that's Virgo energy. This is number 14, by the way. No one can hold us the way nature can. Mama nature is a powerful healer and transmuter of dense energies we may be holding on to. Just as she takes in our, takes in our out breath and returns our bones to fertile soil, so too can she transform our wounds if we can allow ourselves to surrender to lie in her grassy arms or be embraced by her branches. You can already start picturing yourself somewhere in nature, enjoying and connecting. Just as plastics and oils cannot be broken down in the earth for renewal, when our emotions become hardened and impenetrable, catalyzed into something more destructive, they cannot be transformed into the compost that we grow from. Experiences we may categorize as good or bad are part of life. Death and rebirth are part of the natural cycle that allows for the continuation of life. Creating something through suppression and control that will not break down will only bring us further out of harmony. Nature is all around us. Notice her and know that when you feel like no one else can hold you, she can. Spend as much time in nature as possible and do what you can to preserve it. The themes are reliability, grounding, finding our roots, physical healing, nurture, solid foundations, fertility, and vitality. Yeah, so you can approach it from different ways, like listen to yourself and what guides you at this time. But again, I'm getting for a lot of people, it's like this finding this extra strength and power with the help of nature. Right, like nature is a, is a natural healer, pun unintended. What do we have for the masculine swatch? The portal keeper, number 50. So both of them actually, the masculine and the feminine card, they come, come down to five. A different cycle, of course, but it's interesting because five is a number of change. So we talk a lot about uh, changes coming in in like the springtime, but also the change of the seasons itself is a change right and our ancestors they paid a lot more attention to it and some of them start would start their rituals um, while it's still winter others would be welcome in spring as it's all like already happening but they definitely acknowledged of the big shifts and the energies that they could feel right like their life would be refreshed and reset in a certain meaning on a certain level so to me, this has a lot to do with this renewal energy that we're experiencing, because this coming week is actually the week when the spring begins. And yeah, I know in States we also have some 
other date when it's um, spring equinox but essentially this is when spring begins calendar time right like so it's already coming in for us and even astrologically pisces is one of those signs on the like the cusp right like it's the last sign of the zodiacal will the portal keeper as we become more sensitive and aware we're more receptive to mystical experience we can realize that there are overlaying realities that seem just as real, if not more vibrant and profound than the fam familiar everyday one. There is a theory that space and time are constructs that allow our human minds to grasp sequences in chronological order and enable us to orienta orientate and move forward to reality. In their current evolution, humans are only using a small portion of their brain capacity. If we unlock our mind's potential, what will we face them though we can't now. Uh, there is information out there that isn't real to us until we glimpse it with our senses. The beings of Lemuria evolved with a different kind of intelligence. They were skilled at harnessing energy from natural and abundant forces, such as crystals, the heart of the earth, and the moon. Um, they could share complex information without the words. Again, you see, it's kind of like all spinning around this full moon energy. Um, they could share complex information without words. The Lemurians operated in multiple realms at will and could disappear from human perception. Technically, they were in the same location, but in an overlaying reality, a parallel di dimension which could be very different. Physically advanced people can sense discarnate souls, elementals in nature and spirit guides. guides. They can also see Oh, it's a big one. Information and energy fields. These perceptions, clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairaudience are still connected to this reality, but are examples of what can happen when we raise our consciousness or train ourselves to the subtleties of what is happening around us. In essence, we share our physical location with oral overlaying beings and energies and can raise the wall where our vibration to match and enter their realms of reality. Hence the keeper. Uh, and then I'm going to skip part of it because there's a lot of text here. Uh, but coming back to you and the meaning of the card, how are you connected to your mystical self? How am I to raise your vibration to access information that isn't normally perceivable? How can you lift your spirits and soar into wider awareness so you can see life from a heightened perspective? When our minds get out of the way, we can reach the bliss state of seamless, unspeakable, where the need for a linear life drops away and we can center ourselves through a sense of eternal being. And again, to me, this is like connectedness, right? This connection to other realms, to other creatures, other intelligence. Okay. I'll go six cards and then six cards of clarification. I'm using the Spellcaster Tarot today, and the bottom of the deck is Ten of Wands, which again to me is like the quintessential uh, full moon energy because this is the release, the point where, like the focal point where we say, okay, I can't keep doing this anymore. Like this is so exhausting. Like imagine this guy with all these things. It's like, oh my gosh, like there's got to be a better way <laughs> you know like like in this particular situation think about it for a second just for a second right like he's doing all this maybe he's already dropped more than one or more than once them right maybe he even tripped over something because clearly it's hard to see for him with all this once right so that's how the progress happened historically that's when a man would decide then uh you know what it's really impractical because if I keep spending this much energy and risk my health with this kind of task, I will not get much done, right? Like it, I'm not gonna be able to run my household, run my business, whatever they were doing there, right? Like, and that's when they started thinking about tools, uh, maybe like tying this together, uh, you know, like different kinds of setups and maybe even process of how to make it easier. So you don't end up injured or like super exhausted that you can't do anything else for the rest of the day and this is kind of similar but more on the emotional level because it's interesting because 
I mean, the sun is in Pisces now. So although Virgo is a healer in the physical, Pisces is the energy of emotional healing. And that's the moon energy, essentially. The chariot on the bottom of the deck here. Yeah, so it's like, I want to make changes and fast. Wow, speaking of which, <laughs> for feminines we have... So the first question here is, what are we releasing? We have the tower and two of pentacles, but it's a very interesting tower because it also has some people here at the bottom. And it's like they're trying to sort of like crawl out because obviously big things are happening. And this guy's like, nope, this is like, this is nice try. <laughs> You're not gonna avoid that, right? So it's like, <sighs> feminine's releasing the need to avoid the confrontation, to, avoid this like big breaking point um for the sake of like making peace uh keeping everyone happy or even keeping themselves at like a fake feeling of peace because it may feel peaceful for a while if you're not arguing with anyone and it's like yeah yeah, yeah it's just easier and it's like yeah it's easier for me first of all so why would i do that but then if problems stay unresolved, right? It builds like, if, if we talk about relationship for a second, right? It builds resentment. It's still gonna blow up at some point, right? So essentially you're making things worse, right? Um, and it can be like that with everything and anything. And very much I can give you examples with very practical life, connected with your finances, with your, I don't know, neighbors making noise, something else. And it can go into the, um, what was it going to say? To emotional state as well. How you approach difficult situations, right? And the tower moment brings in this clarity of like, okay, if you can figure it out, you can break this up, like break the pattern up. I'm going to help you. Here you go. And it's like, <clears throat> right? And first, it may be shocking, but it will be for your own good. For masculines, we have Nine of Swords clarified by Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, it's very interesting. Masculines feel deep down that they do deserve and they do want the Ten of Pentacles, which would be happy and abundant life for themselves and for their loved ones. And yes, it comes, the feminine comes into the picture because we're talking about Twin Flames, right? One way or another. And this is like, I'm feeling like a range of different scenarios here. For some masculines who were kind of a, like already feeling good about the idea of a family and building something together, having that mutual responsibility, building that lifelong partnership, this is them leaving behind the anxiety behind like, is this going to be ideal? Is this going to be what I pictured in my mind? And if not, then why bother? Like it's easier to stay a bachelor or whatever. Um, or maybe um if they are in an unhappy situation in the karmic situation they were like I just like this new stuff is not supposed it's not gonna be probably not gonna be much better than what i have so why bother like essentially right they're leaving that behind for some they were pushing away the idea itself very hard like like that like, nope nope <laughs> i don't need that and this is a societal challenge and like in general right now for the collective so many men decide not to build a family and stay single um but for those this is like obviously the whole like the thought of it right because they are the twin like that's the that's kind of what they're wired for to build a partnership to have life together with their twin with someone that they can do mission they can do life you know they can realize themselves so Obviously, the energies and the universe is pushing them towards that. And imagine if the person consciously is very much opposing it, right? It's causing all this anxiety and um, feeling at the loss I'm getting. So that's been put behind. <sighs> what opportunities does the moon bring? For feminines, seven of pentacles clarified by three of wands. Both cards of planning and setting intentions. This full moon is like clearing up the space of that conflict and uh, negative emotions that were lingering before to build something new and beautiful. 
right? But what I'm hearing immediately is that it doesn't mean that it'll just happen magically to you. Uh, one day you wake up and you have all this figured out and like your dreams are coming true. No, it means that you'll need to put in the effort for this, right? And if you, even at the planning stage, you still need to do the preparation. You need to get your facts, to get your team, whatever, whatever, right? If this is for the, um, for the life with your twin flame, uh, like more of personal relationship, you're thinking that it, that's what resonates for you right now. That's how you hear it. Then still prepare by doing healing, by seeing where your trigger points are and what you can do with those, right? Like all this in, of like uh, engaging with other people to see how you can build those partnerships in a healthy way. You need to have different examples, you need to have that specter, spectrum. Uh, and a lot of times, until we heal for real, um, like until we heal our main kind of blocks and blockages, it's very hard for us to have that spectrum because the spectrum is always muddied and foggy with our own pain, right? When you are, feel a lot more freed from it uh, and you can build those kind and loving relationships, then you're starting to see what the spectrum out there from other people right and it's going to have very different flavor so it's important to know essentially what do you expect and what is what does good look like for masculines knight of swords clarified by four of cups yeah masculines uh for them that anxiety once they leave it behind and again it's all it's so all sorts very masculine very 4d about like thoughts and communication so once their thoughts are cleared from that anxiety of like I really want this, but it's probably not going to be as good as I want it to be. So I better just not bother about it at all. As soon as that's gone, they will want to move quickly. They will want to communicate. They will speak about the opportunities that were lost, but they will not want to lose it again. This is like that point in time when they're like, okay, I'm not going to make the same mistakes. I got to do better this time. This is important. I know it now and I'm ready. Messages from feminines to masculines. High priestess clarified by Six of Cups. So yeah, feminine is staying in their divine feminine vibe and they're reminding their DMs that they are first and foremost light workers. And although they know about this deep connection between them and how precious it is and how important it is, they need to prioritize uh, their mission and purpose and what they can do for humanity. So they need to think in that collective in that collective level and stay in their integrated feminine. That's what helps them stay in the integrated energy for everything else that they're dealing with. And it naturally helps them continue helping, continue, helps them to continue to heal. There we go. A uh, message from masculines to feminines, the world clarified by seven of cups. And I heard immediately, I wanna give you the world and you are my world. <laughs> oh, this is so, so adorable. Um, but yeah, they are considering like how to approach it because it's so big and it seems a little bit like, you know, when you're looking at the stars and it's just out there, it's somewhere there, very far away. They understand that they kind of, they need to have, have a vision how they get there. And they're considering different um, options right now different steps, different moves, like how do I get there? Like do the stars probably only have like one, two, right? But for connecting with your feminines, you may have a few more and they're trying to understand what will work better so that they want to get it right. And they don't want this to cause any additional pain or confrontation and ideally to heal some and explain and, uh, make up for all the stuff that was done, that the negative stuff. So that's why they're, and for some it will be a travel as well. The world could mean travel. It could mean actual physical travel, or at least it's trying to build the bridge to bridge the gap between the twins so that we can get on the same page and we can build it from there. Okay, I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I hope you use this energy of the full moon in Virgo uh, to your benefit. Uh, you'll do some healing rituals. Definitely connect with Mother Nature. This is 
uh, a go to plan under any circumstances, but especially now. I love you guys and I'll be back with more readings very, very soon.